All right. Hey, welcome back, to, uh, everyone. Thanks for joining. Welcome back to Low Budget Logistics, uh, your logistics and supply chain explainer. Uh, today, I really hope that this uh, <laughs> graph uh, stays up uh, without falling. Fingers crossed there. Um, but this is Low Budget Logistics here. We explain really difficult topics with really easy to understand low budget items um, like this fantastic felt board behind me. So uh, that all being said, let's talk about today's topic, which is, as you can tell, it's the bull whip. Um, and this is the thing which causes uh, most supply chain professionals uh, just enormous amount of headaches. I know I have had stress headaches the last three years running um, because of it. And this is a really important or, uh, supply chain concept to understand um, that up until recently was primarily just theory, uh, but we'll get into that. So uh, without further ado, the bullwhip. Um, it is, the bullwhip effect is, um, is a concept that indicates like how difficult it is to get things in the supply chain. So the supply chain itself loves normality. It loves nice, steady, stable growth. It likes when things are predictable. It likes when there's not a whole lot of changes in the world. It loves that. Um, primarily because the supply chain over the past 40, 50 years has been designed specifically for efficiency, which leads to some problems um, because you can be efficient or you can be resilient. You cannot be both um, because there's, there's added cost to resiliency that does not exist in efficiency. So when you're taking that, that really hyper-efficient mindset you lose resiliency. And one of the things that, that might happen um, is that you start to see this bullwhip effect. <clears throat> so that is the theory itself, and we'll kind of get into it. Um, but what happened in the supply chain recently in the past three years um, is that we saw this actually happen in reality. So 2020 happened, the pandemic happened in the world, um, and things started really affecting the supply chain in really drastic ways. Um, it started with countries getting shut down um, and they stopped producing items um, and that caused right, problems. Um, people were at home a lot and so they started buying stuff online um, and the patterns of purchasing shifted from like let's say retail or wholesale purchasing over to e-commerce and the e-commerce world really wasn't ready for that we saw a huge spike in e-commerce um, purchasing over that year um, other things that happened again people had a lot more money so that drove up um, purchasing power um, and then people stopped working in the sort of industries that move volume in the supply chain. So that started affecting capacity. Um, and then people who were working maybe shifted jobs because they were more available. They started doing more remote work. Um, and so that affected, right, the labor force participation affected um, the supply chain and, and what was available to happen. Um, so that all happened. And each one of those things sent a spike down the, uh, the supply chain. So. What we can see here, right? Like, let's call this the very end where demand gets really high. So let's assume this before was a nice straight line and then demand peaks. Well, demand peaks, right? People start buying a bunch of stuff, which is normally a great thing. The problem is you don't have enough supply. So you, you start going, I don't have enough supply. I need to go and buy more. So then your purchasing demand goes up and Manufacturers are trying to manufacture, you know, stuff for you, but they don't have enough of the raw materials or intermediate materials to make your orders. And so, boop, now we start seeing this sort of this drop off here. And so, what are the manufacturers doing? They're going to go talk to their raw menu, their raw producers, um, and start buying from them, right? And so this starts happening, and what's going to happen, right? Like if you throw a, a a large rock into a nice steady pond, you're going to see ripples. And so as demand goes crazy high, supply goes low, um, requests go high, manufacturing is low, requests go high. And it takes a while for this sort of bullwhip to get evened out nice and smooth again. Um, and the supply chain shocks that we were talking about earlier have really taken about the last three years to, to sort of iron themselves out. 
Other things that happen in that time that sort of have continued to increase the, the length of time needed to get nice and smooth, um, the Ever Given <laughs> got stuck in the Suez Canal, which is one of two major um, canals in the world um, and is really the best way of getting um, stuff out of India um, and the Southeast Asia Indian subcontinent area of the world um, into Western markets is through that canal. Otherwise, you have to go around um, Africa, which is a pretty big continent. Uh, so it's much easier to go through the Suez Canal. When that stopped, all global trade just got impeded for a while, and it took you know weeks to to dig that <coughs> that ship out of the Suez Canal. Uh, fantastic memes, just spectacular. I loved watching them. Other things that happened. Um, that were weird places, big logistical things, at least here in the US, logistical areas got impacted by uh, by the climate. So at least in Texas in 2021, we had what we Texans deemed the snowpocalypse, um, where the entire state of Texas just stopped working for a week. <laughs> um, and that affected two major things. It affected the port of Houston, which is a major um, port for inbound um, you know, goods over the ocean. And then it affected uh, Dallas, which is a major logistics hub for both trucking and air capacity. And so when those things happen, um, it take, took time to get that sort of sorted out and worked through. Um, and and that's that's what the bullwhip effect is saying is that, hey, when, when something happens, that major happens in the world of the supply chain, it will cause problems and it will take time to, to sort those out because the supply chain loves stability. It loves predictability. Um, that's what sort of makes this world go around is that we have the ability on a normal year, we have the ability to to forecast and we have the ability to, to kind of remain efficient. And when some sort of major thing happens, it's going to cause a spike. And then we're going to have to let all of the effects sort of ripple through um, until it starts getting smooth uh, again. Uh, so bullet concept, or the bulb effect uh, is like a very, it's a very important um, supply chain concept. Um, it makes sense conceptually, but someone needs to sort of explain it to you and, and to explain, hey, when you buy a bunch of toilet paper, there's not enough left for everyone else who might want some toilet paper. So maybe don't buy it all at one time. Um, but it's my own, my own little rant there. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's going to be kind of a shorter video, uh, but it's a, it's a fun concept and it's a thing that will help you understand, uh, parts of the supply chain overall, because again, like I said, and I'm going to say it again over and over and over, the supply chain loves stability. It, it, it thrives in that world. Um, and when it is unstable, it has a hard time getting back into that stability. It takes some time. So uh, know that that's sort of the, the key takeaway from today's video. Um, other than that, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, like I said, since this is one of the, the first videos, uh, you're probably going to be my LinkedIn followers. You probably understand this concept. You've probably been living with it for a while. Um, you probably have taken a lot of Advil as a result of trying to combat the bulb effect. Um, so I know this is not for you. This is for someone else. So please share the video with a friend who might, you know, help. Uh, it might help them not hoard so much thing, so many things. Um, it might help explain why you're stressed out all the time. Um, other than that, please like and subscribe down below. Um, if you have a, an idea for a video, please let me know in the comments. Or if you have a question about something that I might have said um, and you want me to, to address it, I'd be happy to address it um, maybe on a Q&A session uh, later down the road. Um, so all that being said, thank you so much for watching today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you have a fantastic day.